do you think the possible additions of numerous out-of-state prospects will grab the attention of more Florida high school players? Miami isn't a fallback school anymore. Um, maybe. Um, and that, that's a good question. And, you know, I, again, go read the recruiting rules. It's still up on stateofthew.com. I wrote it two years ago. It's one, it's a feature that I'm very proud of. Um, but I don't think that there are too many out of state guys right now that Miami is going after. I mean, we have Elijah Arroyo who lives in Texas, but he's from South Florida. You have Deshaun Trotman, who lives in Orlando. No, I mean, no, we have one out-of-state commit at this point. You know, I know that we're going after a couple of guys. I mean, yeah, so 13 commits from Florida and one from Texas. And of those 14, again, 13 of them were born in Day County. And the 14th is Michael McLaughlin, uh, who goes to Stoneman Douglas out in Parkland. But, I mean, we can't wait around for local guys. You know, and that's part of the conversation that I'm, I was having earlier. Yes, there's a lot of guys who are from here that are committed. There's, you know, a lot of guys who are even are from here and then live elsewhere now who are committed. But like if these other guys who are from here and still are here, they don't want to be here. Then we got to find other guys who can play here and then be here. You know, so going after a guy like Elijah Arroyo, I mean, that's kind of an outlier. But, you know, Miami was pursuing the defensive end from uh, Connecticut, who was a teammate of. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, and then he ended up committing to Michigan just this past week. Okay, that's fine because he's a he's a kid who can play here, and there was a connection there because the high school quarterback that led him to an undefeated season last season is now the quarterback of the future for the Miami Hurricanes. So you already you know you're up there recruiting the sorry somebody's DMing me. I'll deal with that later. But so you're up there recruiting the quarterback. You see the DN. So you already have their relationship together. That's the thing. But it's not really like Miami's cold calling many players. I mean, yeah, Keyshawn Smith, that was a cold call. And that was a unique situation just because he already had a prior relationship with Stephen Field. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, you're going to, if they don't want to be here, then we don't need them here. And I mean, it's to a certain point, you know, um, all things being equal, I would like to take the local option, you know, uh, and this, it, it ended up working out, but this was the nature of the discontent of the fan base with Braxton Berrios versus Isaiah Joystick McKenzie, because they're basically the same player, a speed player, a slot player, a kick returner, a punt returner, you know, multifaceted, you know, you can use them in the option game. You can do them in things like that. But you went with the out-of-state guy and not the local guy. I would have rather gone with the local guy personally, even though I, I love Braxton. I've spoken to Braxton. I still follow Braxton on Twitter. Uh, and I think that he was a great hurricane. Maybe so that wasn't the greatest example. But you get what I'm saying. If there's analogous players here and there, you know, you're going to take the local guy. But if the, if the analogous player locally doesn't want to be here, then you got to go get the other guy. And maybe that's what happened in the Braxton Barrios situation. You know, but I think that, you know, if, if we're talking about Michigan being a national program and look, I mentioned Michigan as getting a recruit from Connecticut, that's a four star. And then one from South Florida, St. Thomas Aquinas, that's a four star. So that's a national recruiting program right there. Boom. Just by the last two commitments that they've gotten. OK, Miami should be able to do the same thing. You know, whether it's where, you know whoever, wherever, you know, build the base here. And then you've got to augment that by going elsewhere. It's just, again, it's, it's like you want to uh, make a gourmet meal. You could probably go to Publix and get a lot of those ingredients. But if you want those artisanal, fr uh, you know, uh, truffles, you want this very fresh thing that you're probably going to have to go to a Whole Foods. You're probably going to go have to a farmer's market. You're probably going to have to go somewhere else to get those couple special ingredients to really set that off. Such is the nature of recruiting. I want everybody. I, it would be it would be great if we could just go to Publix and get everything that we needed. Boom. But if you need something special, maybe you got to go somewhere else to get something special. And that's kind of how recruiting works. Well, what I will say is I saw the one about getting um, South Florida kids. The first yep. thing, or the the main the, the elite South Florida kids. The main thing about that is win. That's the missing ingredient. Um, and then at cornerback, maybe if you had a different coach who was a better recruiter but that's a conversation for another day uh but if you wanted more narrative on that again i keep plugging it every time that i'm on here i'm very proud of it it is a it for me is a 
a tent pole piece that I've ever written. It's called the recruiting rules. It's up on the front rules page of stateofview.com. Um, and I spoke to a lot of the guys that you guys read, that you guys listen to, whose other content about recruiting you follow. Tyler Donahue from 247, Andrew Ivins from 247, Bud Elliott, who's now at 247, was formerly with us at SB Nation. Uh, Michael Felder, um, David Ferrones. Uh, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, from the South uh, Florida Sun Sentinel, there's a lot of of really great stuff that I got from myself and embedded with uh, things from them. And a lot of those things, and you can get more narrative on that. 